NCLEX practice exam for gastrointestinal diseases 1. Question 1. Nurse Belinda is assigned to a 41-year-old client who has a diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis. The nurse reviews the laboratory result, anticipating a laboratory report that indicates a serum amylase level of A. 45 units, L. B. 100 units, L. C. 300 units, L. D. 500 units, L. Answer C. The normal serum amylase level is 25 to 151 units, L. With chronic cases of pancreatitis, the rise in serum amylase levels usually does not exceed three times the normal value. In acute pancreatitis, the value may exceed five times the normal value. Options A and B are within normal limits. Option D is an extremely elevated level seen in acute pancreatitis. Question 2. A male client who is recovering from surgery has been advanced from a clear liquid diet to a full liquid diet. The client is looking forward to the diet change because he has been bored with a clear liquid diet. The nurse would offer which full liquid item to the client? A. T. B. Gelatin. C. Custard. D. Popsicle. Question 1. Nurse Belinda is assigned to a 41-year-old client who has a diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis. The nurse reviews the laboratory result, anticipating a laboratory report that indicates a serum amylase level of A. 45 units, L. B. 100 units, L. C. Question 3. Nurse Juvie is caring for a client with cirrhosis of the liver. To minimize the effects of the disorder, the nurse teaches the client about foods that are high in thiamine. The nurse determines that the client has the best understanding of the dietary measures to follow if the client states an intention to increase the intake of A. Pork B. Milk C. Chicken D. Broccoli Answer A. The client with cirrhosis needs to consume foods high in thiamine. Thiamine is present in a variety of foods of plant and animal origin. Pork products are especially rich in this vitamin. Other good food sources include nuts, whole grain cereals, and legumes. Milk contains vitamins A, D, and B2. Poultry contains niacin. Broccoli contains vitamin C, E, and K and folic acid. Question 4. Nurse Oliver checks for residual before administering a bolus tube feeding to a client with a nasogastric tube and obtains a residual amount of 150 milliliters. What is appropriate action for the nurse to take? A. Hold the feeding. B. Rinse till the amount and continue with administering the feeding. C. Elevate the client's head at least 45 degrees and administer the feeding. D. Discard the residual amount and proceed with administering the feeding. Answer A. Unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C, and D are incorrect. Additionally, the feeding is not discarded unless its contents are abnormal in color or characteristics. Question 5. A nurse is inserting a nasogastric tube in an adult male client. During the procedure, the client begins to cough and has difficulty breathing. Which of the following is the appropriate nursing action? A. Quickly insert the tube. B. Notify the physician immediately. C. Remove the tube and reinsert when the respiratory distress subsides. D. Pull back on the tube and wait until the respiratory distress subsides. Question 4. 
Nurse Oliver checks for residual before administering a bolus tube feeding to a client with a nasogastric tube and obtains a residual amount of 150 milliliters. What is appropriate action for the nurse to take? A. Hold the feeding. B. Rinse till the amount and continue with administering the feeding. C. Elevate the client's head at least 45 degrees and administer. Question 6. Nurse Ryan is assessing for correct placement of an oesogatric tube. The nurse aspirates the stomach contents and check the contents for pH. The nurse verifies correct tube placement if which pH value is noted? A. 3.5 B. 7.0 C. 7.35 D. 7.5 Answer A unless specifically indicated. Answer A if the nasogastric tube is in the stomach, the pH of the contents will be acidic. Gastric aspirates have acidic pH values and should be 3.5 or lower. Option B indicates a slightly acidic pH. Option C indicates a neutral pH. Option D indicates an alkaline pH. Question 7. A nurse is preparing to remove an azogatric tube from a female client. The nurse should instruct the client to do which of the following just before the nurse removes the tube? A. Exhale. B. Inhale and exhale quickly. C. Take and hold a deep breath. D. Perform a valsalve maneuver. <laughs> Question 6. Nurse Ryan is assessing for correct placement of an oesogatric tube. The nurse aspirates the stomach contents and check the contents for pH. The nurse verifies correct tube placement if which pH value is noted? A. 3.5. Question 8. Nurse Joy is preparing to administer medication through an azogastric tube that is connected to suction. To administer the medication, the nurse would a. Position the client supine to assist in medication absorption. B. Aspirate the nasogastric tube after medication administration to maintain patency. C. Clamp the nasogastric tube for 30 minutes following administration of the medication. D. Change the suction setting to low intermittent suction for 30 minutes after medication administration. Question 7. A nurse is preparing to remove an azogatric tube from a female client. The nurse should instruct the client to do which of the following just before the nurse removes the tube? A. Exhale. B. Inhale and exhale quickly. C. Take and hold a deep breath. D. Perform a valsalve maneuver. <laughs> Question 6. Nurse Ryan is a Question 8. Nurse Joy is preparing to administer medication through an azogastric tube that is connected to suction. To administer the medication, the nurse would A. Position the client supine to assist in medication absorption. B. Aspirate the nasogastric tube after medication administration to maintain patency. C. Clamp the nasogastric tube for 30 minutes following administration of the medication. D. Change the suction setting to low intermittent suction.
Question 7. A nurse is preparing. Answer A. Hepatitis A is transmitted by the fecal oral route via contaminated food or infected food handlers. Hepatitis B, C, and D are transmitted most commonly via infected blood or body fluids. Answer A. If the nasogastric tube is in the stomach, the pH of the contents will be acidic. Gastric aspirates have acidic pH values and should be 3.5 or lower. Option B indicates a slightly acidic pH. Option C indicates a neutral pH. Option D indicates an alkaline pH. Answer A. The client with cirrhosis needs to consider. Question 6. Nurse Ryan is assessing for correct placement of a nosogatric tube. The nurse aspirates the stomach contents and check the contents for pH. The nurse verifies correct tube placement if which pH value is noted? A. 3.5. B. 7.0. Question 7. A nurse is preparing to remove an azogatric tube from a female client. The nurse should instruct the client to do which of the following just before the nurse removes the tube? A. Exhale. B. Inhale and exhale quickly. C. Take and hold a deep breath. D. Perform a valsalve maneuver. Answer A. Hepatitis A is transmitted by the Answer A. Unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C, and D are incorrect. Additionally, the feeding is not discarded unless its contents are abnormal in color or characteristics. Answer A. The client with cirrhosis needs to consume foods high in thiamine. Thiamine is present in a variety of foods of plant and animal origin. Pork products are especially rich in this vitamin. Other good food sources include nuts, whole grain cereals, and legumes. Milk contains vitamins A, D, and B2. Poultry contains niacin. Broccoli contains vitamin C, E, and K and folic acid. Question 6. Nurse Ryan is a set. Answer A. A barium swallow is an X-ray study that uses a substance called barium for contrast to highlight abnormalities in the gastrointestinal tract. The client should fast for 8 to 12 hours before the test, depending on physician instructions. Most oral medications also are withheld before the test. After the procedure, the nurse must monitor for constipation, which can occur as a result of the presence of barium in the gastrointestinal tract. Question 14. The nurse is performing an abdominal assessment and inspects the skin of the abdomen. The nurse performs which assessment technique next? A. Palpates the abdomen for size. B. Palpates the liver at the right rib margin. C. Listens to bowel sounds in all the quadrants. D. Percusses the right lower abdominal quadrant. <laughs> Answer A. Unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C, and D are incorrect. Additionally, the feeding is not discarded unless its contents are abnormal in color or characteristics. Answer A. Hepatitis A is transmitted by the fecal oral route via contaminated food or infected food handlers. Hepatitis B, C, and D are transmitted most commonly via infected blood or body fluids. Answer A. A barium swallow is an ex-
Answer A unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C, and D are incorrect. Additionally, the feeding is not discarded unless its contents are abnormal in color or characteristics. Answer C. Indomethacinindosin is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and can cause ulceration of the esophagus, stomach, or small intestine. Indomethacin is contraindicated in a client with gastrointestinal disorders. Furosemide Lasix is a loop diuretic. Digoxin is a cardiac medication. Propranololinderol is a adrenergic blocker. Furosemide, digoxin and propranolol are not contraindicated in clients with gastric disorders. Answer A. If the nasogastric tube is in the stomach, the pH of the contents will be acidic. Gastric aspirates have acidic pH values and should be 3.5 or lower. Option B indicates a slightly acidic pH. Option C indicates a neutral pH. Option D indicates an alkaline pH. Answer A. Unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C, and D are incorrect. Additionally, the feeding is not discarded unless its contents are abnormal in color or characteristics. Answer C. Indomethacinindosin is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and can cause ulceration of the esophagus, stomach, or small intestine. Indomethacin is contraindicated in a client with gastrointestinal disorders. Furosemide Lasix is a loop diuretic. Digoxin is a cardiac medication. Propranolinderol is a adrenergic blocker. Furosemide Answer A. The client with cirrhosis needs to consume foods high in thiamine. Thiamine is present in a variety of foods of plant and animal origin. Pork products are especially rich in this vitamin. Other good food sources include nuts, whole grain cereals, and legumes. Milk contains vitamins A, D, and B2. Poultry contains niacin. Broccoli contains vitamin C, E, and K and folic acid. Answer A unless specifically indicated.
Answer A unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C, and D are incorrect. Additionally, the feeding is not discarded unless its contents are abnormal in color or characteristics. Answer A. A barium swallow is an ex- Answer A. Early manifestations of dumping syndrome occur 5 to 30 minutes after eating. Symptoms include vertigo, tachycardia, syncope, sweating, pallor, palpitations, and the desire to lie down. Question 14. The nurse is performing an abdominal assessment and inspects the skin of the abdomen. The nurse performs which assessment technique next? A. Palpates the abdomen for size. B. Palpates the liver at the right rib margin. C. Listens to bowel sounds in all the quadrants. D. Because it Question 7. A nurse is preparing to Answer A. The client with cirrhosis needs to consume foods high in thiamine. Thiamine is present in a variety of foods of plant and animal origin. Pork products are especially rich in this vitamin. Other good food sources include nuts, whole grain cereals, and legumes. Milk contains vitamins A, D, and B2. Poultry contains niacin. Broccoli Question 14. The nurse is performing an abdominal assessment and inspects the skin of the abdomen. The nurse performs which assessment technique next? A. Palpates the abdomen for size. B. Palpates the liver at the right rib margin. C. Listens to bowel sounds in all the quadrants. D. Question 7. A nurse is preparing to remove an azogatric tube from a female client. The nurse should instruct the client to do which of the following just before the nurse removes the tube? A. Exhale. B. Inhale and exhale quickly. C. Take and hold a deep breath. D. Perform a valsalve maneuver. Uh. 
Answer a client with cirrhosis needs to consume foods high in thiamine. Thiamine is present in a variety of foods of plant and animal origin. Pork products are especially rich in this vitamin. Other good food sources include nuts, whole grain cereals, and legumes. Milk Question 27. The nurse is caring for a male client post-operatively following creation of a colostomy. Which nursing diagnosis should the nurse include in the plan of care? A. Sexual dysfunction. B. Body image, disturbed. C. Fear related to poor prognosis. D. Nutrition, more than body requirements, imbalanced. Question 7. A nurse is preparing to remove an azogatric tube from a female client. The nurse should instruct the client to do which of the following just before the nurse removes the tube? A. Exhale. B. Inhale and exhale quickly. C. Take and hold a deep breath. D. Perform a valsalve maneuver. Answer A. Hepatitis A is transmitted by the fecaloral route via contaminated food or infected food handlers. Hepatitis B, C, and D are transmitted most commonly via infected blood or body fluids. Answer A. The client with cirrhosis needs to cons- Question 7. A nurse is preparing. Answer B. If cramping occurs during a colostomy irrigation, the irrigation flow is stopped temporarily and the client is allowed to rest. Cramping may occur from an infusion that is too rapid or is causing too much pressure. The physician does not need to be notified. Increasing the height of the irrigation will cause further discomfort. Medicating the client for pain is not the appropriate action in this situation. Answer A. The client with cirrhosis needs to consume foods high in thiamine. Thiamine is present in a variety of foods of plant and animal origin. Pork products are especially rich in this vitamin. Other good food sources include nuts, whole grain cereals, and legumes. Milk contains vitamins A, D, and B2. Poultry contains niacin. Broccoli contains vitamin C, E, and K and folate. Answer A. If the nasogastric tube is in the stomach, the pH of the contents will be acidic. Gastric aspirates have acidic pH values and should be 3.5 or lower. Option B indicates a slightly acidic pH. Option C indicates question 7. A nurse is preparing to remove a nasogastric tube from a female client. The nurse should instruct the client to do which of the following just before the nurse removes the tube. A. Exhale. B. Inhale and exhale quickly. C. Take and hold a deep breath. D. Perform a valsalve maneuver. Answer A. Early manifestations of dumping syndrome occur 5 to 30 minutes after eating. Symptoms include vertigo, tachycardia, syncope, sweating, pallor, palpitations, and the desire to lie down.
Answer A. If the nasogastric tube is in the stomach. Question 14. The nurse is performing an abdominal assessment and inspects the skin of the abdomen. The nurse performs which assessment technique? Question 33. You're caring for a patient with a sigmoid colostomy. The stool from this colostomy is A. Formed B. Semislid C. Semiliquid D. Watery. Answer A. If the nasogastric tube is in the stomach, the pH of the contents will be acidic. Gastric aspirates have acidic pH values and should be 3.5 or lower. Option B indicates a slightly acidic pH. Option C indicates a neutral pH. Option D indicates... Question 33. You're caring for a patient with a sigmoid colostomy. The stool from this colostomy is... A. Formed. Answer A. If the nasogastric tube is in the stomach, the pH of the contents will be acidic. Gastric aspirates have acidic pH value. Question 36. You're performing an abdominal assessment on Brent who is 52 years. Dotto. In which order do you proceed? A. Observation, percussion, palpation, auscultation. B. Observation, auscultation, percussion, palpation. C. Percussion, palpation, auscultation, observation. D. Palpation, percussion, observation, auscultation. Answer A. Early manifestations of dumping syndrome occur 5 to 30 minutes after eating. Answer A. If the nasogastric tube is in the stomach. Question 36. You're performing an abdominal assessment on Brent who is 52 years. Dotto. In which order do you proceed? A. Observation, percussion, palpation, auscultation. B. Observation, auscultation, percussion, palpation. C. <laughs> Answer A. Early manifestations of dumping syndrome. Answer C. The large intestine absorbs large amounts of water so the initial output from the ileostomy may be as much as 1,500 to 2,000 milliliters slash 24 hours. Gradually, the small intestine absorbs more fluid and the output decreases. Question 27. 
The nurse is caring for a male client post-operatively following creation of a colostomy. Which nursing diagnosis should the nurse include in the plan of care? A. Sexual dysfunction. B. Body image, disturbed. C. Fear related to poor prognosis. D. Nutrition, more than body requirements, imbalanced. Question 36. You're performing an abdominal assessment on Brent who is 52 years. Oh. In which order do you proceed? A. Observation, percussion, palpation, auscultation. B. Observation, auscultation, percussion, palpation. C. Percussion, palpation, auscultation, observation. D. Palpation, percussion, observation, auscultation. Question 33. You're caring for a... Question 27. The nurse is caring for a male client post-operatively following creation of a colostomy. Which nursing diagnosis should the nurse include in the plan of care? A. Answer A. If the nasogastric tube is in the stomach, the pH of the contents will be acidic. Gastric aspirates have acidic pH values and should be 3.5 or lower. Option B indicates a slightly acidic pH. Option C indicates a neutral pH. Option D indicates an alkaline pH. Question 33. You're caring for a patient with a sigmoid colostomy. The stool from this colostomy is A. Formed B. Semislid C. Semiliquid D. Watery Question 27. The nurse is Question 43. You're caring for Lewis, a 67 years doctor, oh, patient with liver cirrhosis who develops ascites and requires paracentesis. Relief of which symptom indicated that the paracentesis was effective? A. Pruritis. B. Dyspnea. C. Jaundice. D. Peripheral neuropathy. Answer A. If the nasogastric tube is in the stomach. Question 33. You're caring for a patient with a sigmoid colostomy. The stool from this colostomy is A. Formed. B. Semislid. C. Semiliquid. D. Watery. Question 27. The nurse is caring for a male client post-operatively following creation of a colostomy. Which nursing diagnosis should the nurse include in the plan of care? A. Sexual dysfunction. B. Body image, disturbed. C. Fear related to poor prognosis. D. Nutrition, more than body requirements, imbalanced. Question 5. A nurse is in certain... Answer A. If the nasogastric tube is in the stomach, the pH of the contents will be acidic. Gastric aspirates have acidic pH values and should be 3.5 or lower. Option B indicates a slightly acidic pH. Option C indicates a neutral pH.
Option D indicates an alkaline pH. Question 33. You're caring for a... Question 27. The nurse is caring for a male client post-operatively following creation of a colostomy. Which nursing diagnosis should the nurse include in the plan of care? Answer A. A barium swallow is an X-ray study that uses a substance called barium for contrast to highlight abnormalities in the gastrointestinal tract. The client should fast for 8 to 12 hours before the test, depending on physician instructions. Most oral medications also are withheld before the test. After the procedure, the nurse must monitor for constipation, which can occur as a result of the presence of barium in the gastrointestinal tract. Question 5. A nurse is inserting a nasogastric tube in an adult male client. During the procedure, the client begins to cough and has difficulty breathing. Which of the following is the appropriate nursing action? A. Quickly insert the tube. B. Question 14. The nurse is performing an abdominal assessment and inspects the skin of the abdomen. The nurse performs which assessment technique next? A. Palpates the abdomen for size. B. Palpates the liver at the right rib margin. C. Listens to bowel sounds in all the quadrants. D. Percusses the right lower abdominal quadrant. Answer C. Endomethacin endosin is a non- Answer A. Unless specifically indicated. Residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C. Question 43. You're caring for Lewis, a 67 years doctor. Patient with liver cirrhosis who develops ascites and requires paracentesis. Relief of which symptom indicated that the paracentesis was effective? A. Pruritus. B. Dyspnea. C. Jaundice. D. Peripheral neuropathy. Question 5. A nurse is insert. Question 14. The nurse is performing an abdominal assessment and inspects the skin of the abdomen. The nurse performs which assessment technique next? A. Palpates the abdomen. Answer C. Endomethacin endosin is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and can cause ulceration of the esophagus, stomach, or small intestine. Endomethacin is contraindicated in a client with gastrointestinal disorders. Furosemide lasix is a loop diuretic. Digoxin is a cardiac medication. Propranolol is a adrenergic blocker. Furosemide, digoxin, and propranolol. Question 43. You're caring for Lewis, a 67 years doctor. Patient with liver cirrhosis who develops ascites and requires paracentesis. 
relief of which symptom indicated that the paracentesis, answer A unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C, and D are incorrect. Additionally, the feeding is not discarded unless its contents are abnormal in color or characteristics. Answer C. Indomethacinindosin is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and can cause ulceration of the esophagus, stomach, or small intestine. Indometh Answer A. Unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore, op Answer C. Indomethacinindosin is a non- Question 8. Nurse Joy is preparing to administer medication through an azogastric tube that is connected to suction. To administer the medication, the nurse- Answer A. If the nasogastric tube is in the stomach, the pH of the contents will be acidic. Gastric aspirates have acidic pH values and should be 3.5 or lower. Option B indicates a slightly acidic pH. Option C indicates a neutral pH. Option D indicates an alkaline pH. Answer A unless specifically indicated. Answer C. The large intestine absorbs large amounts of water so the initial output from the ileostomy may be as much as 1,500 to 2,000 m. Answer C. Indomethacinindosin is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and can cause ulceration of the esophagus, stomach, or small intestine. Indomethacin is contraindicated in a client with gastrointestinal disorders. Furosemide Lasix is a loop diuretic. Digoxin is a cardiac medication. Propranolalindaryl is a adrenergic blocker. Furosemide, digoxin, and propranolol are not contraindicated in clients with gastric disorders. Answer A. If the nasogastric tube is in the stomach, the pH of the contents will be acidic. Gastric. Answer A. Unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C, and D are incorrect. Additionally, the feeding is not discarded unless its contents are abnormal in color or characteristics. Answer C. The large intestine absorbs large. Answer C. Indomethacinindosin is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and can cause ulceration of the esophagus, stomach, or small intestine. Indomethacin is contra-
Answer A. If the nasogastric tube is in the stomach. Question 43. You're caring for Lewis, a 67 years doctor. Patient with liver cirrhosis who develops ascites and requires paracentesis. Relief of which symptom? Answer C. The large intestine absorbs large amounts of water so the initial output from the ileostomy may be as much as 1,500 to 2,000 milliliters slash 24 hours. Gradually, the small intestine absorbs more fluid and the output decreases. Answer A unless specifically indicated. Answer A if the nasogastric tube is in the stomach, the pH of the contents will be acidic. Gastric aspirates have acidic pH values and should be 3.5 or lower. Option B indicates a slightly acidic pH. Option C indicates a neutral pH. Option D indicates an alkaline pH. Question 43. You're caring for Lewis. Answer C. The large intestine absorbs large amounts of water so the initial output from the ileostomy may be as much as 1,500 to 2,000. Answer A. Unless specifically indicated. Residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C, and D are incorrect. Additionally, the feeding is not discarded unless its contents are abnormal in color or characteristics. Question 8. Nurse Joy is preparing to administer medication through a nasogastric tube that is connected to suction. To administer the medication, the nurse would, question 43. You're caring for Lewis, a 67 years doctor. Patient with liver cirrhosis who develops ascites and requires paracentesis. Relief of which symptom indicated that the paracentesis was effective? A. Pruritis. B. Dyspnea. C. Jaundice. D. P Answer A. If the nasogastric tube is in the stomach. Answer A. A barium swallow is an ex- Question 43. You're caring for Lewis, a 67 years doctor. Patient with liver cirrhosis who develops- Answer A. If the nasogastric tube is in the stomach, the pH of the contents will be acidic. Gastric aspirates have acidic pH values and should be 3.5 or lower. Option B indicates a slightly acidic pH. Option C indicates a neutral pH. Option D indicates an alkaline pH. Answer C. Indomethacinindosin is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and can cause ulceration of the... Question 65. Donald is a 61 years doctor. Man with diverticulitis. Diverticulitis is characterized by... A. Periodic rectal hemorrhage. B. Hypertension and tachycardia. C. Vomiting and elevated temperature. D. Crampy and lower left quadrant pain and low grade fever. Question 66. Brenda, a 36 years doctor. Patient is on your floor with acute pancreatitis. 
treatment for her includes a. Continuous peritoneal lavage b. Regular diet with increased fat c. Nutritional support with TPN d. Insertion of a teat tube to drain the pancreas Answer C. Indomethacin indocin is a non Question 8. Nurse Joy is preparing to administer medication through an azogastric tube that is connected to suction. To admit Question 67. Glenda has cholelithiasis school stones. You expect her to complain of A. Pain in the right upper quadrant, radiating to the shoulder. B. Pain in the right lower quadrant, with rebound tenderness. C. Pain in the left upper quadrant, with shortness of breath. D. Pain in the left lower quadrant, with mild cramping. Answer C. The large intestine absorbs large amounts of water so the initial output from the ileostomy may be as much as 1,500. Answer A. Unless specifically indicated. Residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C, and D are incorrect. Additionally, the feeding is not discarded unless its contents are abnormal in color or characteristics. Question 67. Glenda has cholelithiasis school stones. You expect her to complain of A. Question 5. A nurse is inserted. Question 4. Nurse Oliver checks for residual before administering a bolus tube feeding to a client with an azogastric tube and obtains a residual amount of 150 milliliters. What is appropriate action for the nurse to take? A. Question 36. You're performing an abdominal assessment on Brent who is 52 years. To. In which order do you proceed? A. Observation. Percussion, palpation, auscultation. B. Observation, auscultation, percussion, palpation. C. Question 67. Glenda has cola. Question 5. A nurse is inserting a nasogastric tube in an adult male client. During the procedure, the client begins to cough and has difficulty breathing. Which of the following is the appropriate nursing action? A. Quickly insert the tube. B. Notify the physician immediately. C. Remove the tube and reinsert when the rest... Question 4. Nurse Oliver checks... Question 36. You're performing an abdominal assessment on Brent who is 52 years. To. In which order do you proceed? Question 67. Glenda has cholelithiasis school stones. You expect her to complain of A. Pain in the right upper quadrant, radiating to the shoulder. B. Pain in the right lower quadrant, with rebound tenderness. C. Pain in the left upper quadrant, with shortness of breath. Question 5. A nurse is inserting a nasogastric tube in an adult male client. During the procedure, the client begins to cough and has difficulty breathing. Which of the following? Question 4. Nurse Oliver checks for residual before administering a bolus tube feeding to a client with a nasogastric tube and obtains a residual amount of 150 milliliters. What is appropriate action for the nurse to take? A. Hold the feeding. B. Reinstill the amount and continue with administering the feeding.
C. Elevate the client's head at Question 36. You're performing an Question 67. Galenda has cholelithiasis school stones. You expect her to complain of A. Pain in the right upper Answer A unless specifically indicated. Question 4. Nurse Oliver checks for residual before administering a bolus tube feeding to a client with an azog. Question 36. You're performing an abdominal assessment on Brent who is 52 years. Dotto. In which order do you proceed? A. Observation, percussion, palpation, auscultation. B. Observation, auscultation, percussion, palpation. C. Percussion, palpation, auscultation, observation. D. Question 67. Galenda has cola. Answer A unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C, and D are incorrect. Additionally, the feeding is not discarded unless its contents are abnormal in color or characteristics. Question 4. Nurse Oliver checks Answer A. The client with cirrhosis needs to consume foods high in thiamine. Thiamine is present in a variety of foods of plant and animal origin. Question 36. You're performing an abdominal assessment on Brent who is 52 years. Dotto. In which order do you proceed? A. Observation, percussion, palpation, auscultation. B. Observation, auscultation, percussion, palpation. C. Percussion, palpation, auscultation, observation. D. Palpation, percussion, observation, auscultation. Question 8. Nurse Joy is prepared. Answer A unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C, and D are incorrect. Question 4. Nurse Oliver checks for residual before administering a bolus tube feeding to a client with a nasogastric tube and obtains a residual amount of 150 milliliters. What is appropriate action for the nurse to take? A. Hold the feeding. B. Rinse till the amount and continue with administering the feeding. C. Elevate the client's head at least 45 degrees and administer the feeding. D. Discard the residual amount and proceed with administering the feed. Answer A. The client with cirrhosis needs to cons- Question 36. You're performing an abdominal assessment on Brent who is 52 years. Dotto. In which- Question 8. Nurse Joy is preparing to administer medication through an azogastric tube that is connected to suction. To administer the medication, the nurse would A. Position the client supine to assist in medication absorption. B. Aspirate the nasogastric tube after medication administration to maintain patency. C. Clamp the nasogastric tube for th Answer A unless specifically indicated. Question 5. A nurse is inserting a nasogastric tube in an adult male client. During the procedure, the client begins to
Answer A The client with cirrhosis needs to consider. Question 8. Nurse Joy is preparing to administer medication through an azoga. Answer A Unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C, and D are incorrect. Additionally, the feeding is not discarded unless its contents are abnormal in color or characteristics. Question 5. A nurse is inserted. Answer A. The client with cirrhosis needs to consume foods high in thiamine. Thiamine is present in a variety of foods of plant and animal origin. Pork products are especially rich in this vitamin. Other good food sources include nuts, whole grain cereals, and legumes. Milk contains vitamins A, D, and B2. Poultry contains niacin. Broccoli contains vitamin C, E, and K and folic acid. Question 8. Nurse Joy is prepared. Answer D. Rest periods and small frequent meals is indicated during the acute phase of hepatitis B. Question 5. A nurse is inserting a nasal gastric tube in an adult male client. During the procedure, the client begins to cough and has difficulty breathing. Which of the following is the appropriate nursing action? A. Quickly insert the tube. B. Notify the physician immediately. C. Remove the tube and reinsert when the respiratory distress subsides. D. Pull back on the tube and wait until... Answer A. Unless specifically indicated. Answer A. The client with cirrhosis needs to consume foods high in thiamine. Thiamine is present in a variety of foods of plant and animal origin. Pork products are especially rich in this vitamin. Other good food. Question 8. Nurse Joy is preparing to administer medication through an azogastric tube that is connected to suction. To administer the medication, the nurse would A. Position the client supine to assist in medication absorption. B. Aspirate the nasogastric tube after medication administration to maintain patency. C. Clamp the nasogastric tube for 30 minutes following administration of the medication. D. Change the suction setting to low intermittent suction for 30 minutes after medication administration. Answer D. Rest periods and small frequent meals. Question 5. A nurse is inserting a nasogastric tube in an adult male client. During the procedure, the client begins to cough and has difficulty breathing. Answer A. Unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C, and D are incorrect. Additionally, the feeding is not discarded unless its contents are abnormal in color or characteristics. Answer A. The client with cirrhosis needs to consider. Question 36. You're performing an abdominal assessment on Brent who Answer D. Rest periods and small frequent meals is indicated during the acute phase of hepatitis B. Question 8. Nurse Joy is prepared. Answer A. Unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Answer A. The client with cirrhosis needs to consume foods high in thiamine. Thiamine is present in a variety of foods of plant and animal origin. 
pork products are especially rich in this vitamin. Other good food sources include nuts, whole grain cereals, and legumes. Milk contains vitamins A, D, and B2. Poultry contains niacin. Broccoli contains vitamin C, E, and K and folic acid. Question 36. You're performing an answer D. Rest periods and small frequent meals is indicated during the acute phase of hepatitis B. Question 8. Nurse Joy is preparing to administer medication through an azogastric tube that is connected to suction. To administer the medication, the nurse would A. Position the client supine to assist in medication absorption. B. Aspirate the nasogastric tube after medication administration to maintain patency. C. Clamp the nasogastric tube for 30 minutes following administration of the medication. D. Change the suction setting to low intermittent suction for 30 minutes after medication administration. Answer A unless specifically indicated. Question 36. You're performing an abdominal assessment on Brent who is 52 years. To. In which order do you proceed? A. Observation, percussion, palpation, auscultation. B. Observation. Auscultation. Answer A. The client with cirrhosis needs to cons... Question 8. Nurse Joy is preparing to administer medication through an azogastric tube that is connected to suction. To administer the medication, the nurse would... Answer A. Unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100 milliliters require holding the feeding. Therefore options B, C, and D are incorrect. Additionally, the feeding is not discarded unless its contents are abnormal in color or characteristics. Question 36. You're performing an abdominal assessment on Brent who is 52 years. To. In which order do you proceed? A. Observation, percussion, palp. Question 91. Findings during an endoscopic exam include a cobblestone appearance of the colon in your patient. The findings are characteristic of which disorder? A. Ulcer. B. Crohn's disease. C. Chronic gastritis. D. Ulcerative colitis. Question 4. Nurse Oliver checks. Question 5. A nurse is inserting a nasogastric tube in an adult male client. During the procedure, the client begins to cough and has difficulty breathing. Question 92. What information is correct about stomach cancer? A. Stomach pain is often a late symptom. B. Surgery is often a successful treatment. C. Chemotherapy and radiation are often successful treatments. D. The patient can survive for an extended time with TPN. Question 36. You're performing an... Question 4. Nurse Oliver checks for residual before administering a bolus tube feeding to a client with a nasogastric tube and obtains a residual amount of 150 milliliters. What is appropriate action for the nurse to take? A. Hold the feeding. B. Reinstate. Question 5. A nurse is insert. <laughs> Question 36. 
you're performing an abdominal assessment on Brent who is 52 years. To. In which order do you proceed? A. Observation, percussion, palpation, auscultation. B. Observation, auscultation, percussion, palpation. C. Percussion, palp. Question 92. What information? Question 4. Nurse Oliver checks for residual before administering a bolus tube feeding to a client with a nasogastric tube and obtains a residual amount of 150 milliliters. What is appropriate action for the nurse to take? A. Hold the question 5. A nurse is inserting a nasogastric tube in an adult male client. During the procedure, the client begins to cough and has difficulty breathing. Which of the following is the appropriate nursing action? A. Quickly insert the tube. B. Notify the physician immediately. C. Remove the tube and reinsert when the respiratory de Question 36. You're performing an abdominal assessment on Brent who is 52 years. To. In which order do you proceed? A. Observation, percussion, pa question 92. What information is correct about stomach cancer? A. Stomach pain is often a late symptom. B. Surgery is often a successful treatment. C. Chemotherapy and radiation are often successful treatments. D. The patient can survive for an extended time with TPN. Question 4. Nurse Oliver checks. Question 8. Nurse Joy is preparing to administer medication through an azogastric tube that is connected to suction. To Question 36. You're performing an... Question 4. Nurse Oliver checks for residual before administering a bolus tube feeding to a client with a nasogastric tube and obtains a residual amount of 150 milliliters. What is appropriate action for the nurse to take? A. Hold the feeding. B. Reinstill the amount and continue with administering the feeding. Question 8. Nurse Joy is prepared. Question 36. You're performing an abdominal assessment on Brent who is 52 years. To. In which order do you proceed? A. Observation, percussion, palpation, auscultation. B. Observation, auscultation, percussion, palpation. C. Percussion, palpation. Question 4. Nurse Oliver checks for residual before administering a bolus tube feeding to a client with a nasogastric tube and obtains a residual amount of 150 milliliters. What is appropriate action for the nurse? Question 5. A nurse is inserting a nasogastric tube in an adult male client. During the procedure, the client begins to cough and has difficulty breathing. Which of the following is the appropriate nursing action? A. Quickly insert the tube. B. Notify the physician immediately. C. Remove the tube and reinsert when the respiratory distress subsides. D. Pull back on the tube and wait until the respiratory distress subsides.
Question 36. You're performing an abdominal assessment on Brent who is 52 years. Oh. In which order do you proceed? A. Observation, percussion, palpation, auscultation. B. Observation, auscultation, percussion. Answer A unless specifically indicated, residual amounts more than 100.